Welcome to our lecture online. This particular problem is a real favorite of mine. It's a really interesting problem and uh, well you'll see what I mean but let, let's read it together and see what it says. A particle of mass m and positive charge q moving with a constant velocity 4 meters per second in the positive x direction enters a region of uniform static magnetic field normal to the xy plane. The region of the magnetic field extends from x equals 0 to x equals L for all values of y. After passing through this region, the particle emerges on the other side after 10 milliseconds with a velocity v equals 2 times the square root of 3 in the i direction plus 2 times j in the y direction in meters per second. And then we have four statements and we're trying to figure out which of those four are correct. Now, if I look at the first two, A and B, well, one of those has to be correct, right? The magnetic field will be pointing in the positive x direction or the negative, I should say, positive z direction or the negative z direction. And then C and D may, well, only one of those two may be correct. Maybe both of them are wrong, but at least one may be correct. Both cannot be correct between C and D. All right, but let's draw a picture to see what's going on. Otherwise, it would be too difficult to figure this out. So first of all, we'll draw the y-axis, and let me move over here, so that gives us some more room to work with. So here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. Notice that a particle is moving, so let's say we have a positive particle, it is moving with a velocity of 4 meters per second. It has mass m and charge q, and it enters a magnetic field. Now when it emerges, it will be moving in the positive x direction and in the positive y direction. So it looks like it's going to curve like this. And at some point it will emerge from the magnetic field. So this would be x equals L. This is x equals 0. And then it's going to move, the particle will be over here and it's going to move in some direction like this. This is V final. And of course it's going to make an angle theta with V final. Wow, how do you do this? Well, first of all, let's try to answer A or B. So notice that the particle is moving in this direction. So notice that if we take our fingers, we move in direction of motion. It's a positive particle, so I use my right hand. And then I curl my fingers in the direction of magnetic field. Then my thumb will point in direction of the force. So it looks like the force is up. That means the magnetic field must be into the board. So that means the magnetic field will look like this. So that means that the B field is equal to the magnitude of B in the negative Z direction. So minus Z direction. So it's going to point into the board. That means A is correct. And B must be wrong. Okay, now about the magnitude. How do you go about that? Well, you know that the particle is going to be traveling through there in a circular path. That, so it has a radius. So there'll be some sort of radius like this. R, it's going to move along that path, and we need to know the angle right here, theta. So the angle can be determined by the direction of motion right here at the end. So we say V final is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 in the I direction, plus 2 times 2 in the J direction. Of course, it'll be in meters per second. That means that we can say that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite would be 2. The adjacent would be 2 times the square root of 3. The 2's cancel out. So we have the arc tangent of 1 over the square root of 3, and we should remember that that has to be equal to 30 degrees, which means it's equal to pi over 6. So the angle we go through is pi over 6. Now, to find the radius, we know that we have a relationship, and let's get rid of this line right here. We know we have a relationship between moving along the arc length. So let's think of this as arc length S, and think of this as being an angle from there to there. This angle here would be theta. We can then say that the arc length traveled S is equal to R times theta, or R is going to be S divided by theta. Now, how far did the particle travel? Well, we know that the particle traveled for a time of 10 milliseconds at a speed of 4 meters per second. So we know that distance equals velocity times time. So this would be equal to 4 meters per second. 
times the time of 0.01 seconds. So we know that we travel 0.04 meters. So the travel distance, d, which is equal to s, the arc length, we travel a distance of 0.04 meters, 4 centimeters, in the allotted time along this arc length. So that means that r is equal to s, which is equal to 0.4, divided by theta, which is pi over 6, which is 0.6 times 0.4, that would be Ooh, let's see here. Oh, 0 0.04. We're missing a decimal place. So it would be 0 0.24 divided by pi. So that is the radius of the arc of the path of the particle. So now we're getting close because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say that the fact that the particle moves through the magnetic field, it experiences a force due to the magnetic field and of course that force is used for the centripetal force to make it go into a circle so we can say that the force due to the magnetic field must equal the centripetal force the force due to the magnetic field is equal to QVB and the force due to the centripetal force is equal to MV squared over R um, hmm, hmm, hmm. so we have a V here and a V here that cancels and we want to know the magnitude of the magnetic field, so B is equal to the mass times the velocity divided by Q divided by R. All we have to do now is plug in the numbers and hopefully we'll get one of those two answers. So we have the mass, M. Velocity is going to be 0. Point, oh no, not 0 0.04, it's going to be 4. Velocity is 4 divided by Q, which is Q, and R, which we found to be 0 0.24, divided by pi, but then the pi goes to the numerator. Getting rid of decimal points, I always like to get rid of decimals, so multiply both the top and the bottom by 100, so we get 400 m pi divided by 24 Q. If I now divide the top and the bottom by 8, that gives me 50 m pi divided by 3 q and now take a look and see that who that happens to be this answer right here so c is correct d must be wrong and so the two correct answers in this particular problem are a and c see why this is one of my favorites it just just an ingenious problem we do have to know certain things first of all we know that the entry point is the particle traveling horizontally. Then when it leaves, it travels in this direction. That allows us to figure out that the magnetic field is into the board, so that gives us one of the two answers. Next, we have to figure out that it travels for 10 milliseconds at a velocity of 4 meters per second, so we know the travel distance along the arc. Knowing the relationship between arc length equals r times theta, we're able to find r. And we're able to find theta because theta is simply a result of taking the arc tangent of the direction as it comes in and the direction it goes out. So the vertical over the horizontal gives us the, the angle theta, which is 30 degrees or pi over 6. So we're, allowed now to, we're able now to get r, the distance r. And then by setting these two equal to one another, fb equals fc, we then realize that we can solve for b and v is known m is m, q is q, and r was figured out like that, and the rest, you know, that's straightforward. But yeah, again, you have to think about all those things, but that, if you're on top of it and you remember those key equations, you could probably squeeze this one out in about three minutes, and that is how it's done. Fun problem, huh?